Here we go, another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kuder, with Sutton Group Ottawa. And today we have with us Abe Menkel from Lechnam Incorporated. So recently also you've taken on a project for another friend of ours as well too, with the, and actually they were on the show, Apex Health. Yes. So tell me a little bit more about that project. How was it? How did you get approached? Why you? Yes. Uh, and by the way, I did check it out. Did you go I and was see there it? on Monday. I checked it out. It is fabulous. The oh, work you've done, man, is just I'm amazing. Glad I'm glad to hear. Yeah. Dr. El Masri is also a longtime friend since high school. So we're talking 24 over 25 years. And, you know, just a, kind of a back and forth. We were talking about projects and stuff like that. And he, he asked me if I'd be interested in coming to have a look at their space. You know, it was an old danky massage yeah. clinic that uh, was in pretty bad shape. And uh, that's kind of where it just led to. It was very simple, you know, straightforward process. We were very comfortable with each other to begin with. So, you know, it wasn't like, uh, oh, I need to get to know you and get a feel for you. Tell us what you think and how much is it going to cost? Can you, you know, manage yeah. the budget a little bit? No, you know, we, there was a level of trust, like you said, already. And um, It's funny you say that because I get that. I get asked that all the time. Like, how do you do business with friends? Yeah. And like, to me, it's not business. At the end of the day, like, yeah, these are just family members. Yeah, pretty like much. I, yes, we're friends, but like you know, we're we're friends enough that it's like family. We've yeah, been exactly. Each other's life for twenty some years. Exactly. Uh, that we know each other, we have this sort of level of trust, and like we, you feel like you owe it to them. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, to just show up and do your best, regardless. 100%. And you do that to every client, but hundred percent family is different here. Yeah, sure. and you know, as a it it had a, it kind of hit home a little bit too. You know, it was a, a startup business. Right. So the concept of they're starting something new, you know, you have to be mindful of their budgets and their timelines and stuff like that. So you have to make that work for you and for them mostly. Right. Is that you make sure that it it'll get done in the amount of time that they need to get done in and, and done as nice as possible, because this is their business. This is their the face of their business. It has to look nice. It has yeah. to look right. It has to fit the bill for for the type of business that they're running. So. We went through the project, you know, they told me what they were looking to do and, you know, we, we banged it out in about a month and a half roughly, which was perfect for their timeline. And, um, and I wish them all the best, you know, they're it's amazing. Like the, uh, the place where I walked idea. in, I was like, man, this is just first class. Yeah. Like it's really good. Very well thought of. It's scary. Like there's lots of ventilation coming in really yeah. good. Like yeah. it's, light is really good. Like I just did not feel like I'm in a doctor's office. Exactly. Like it's yeah. a nice little lounge kind of area spa yeah. yeah for sure yeah no i wish them all the best apex health or uh it's it's something new and upcoming i think it's gonna it's gonna fly we don't do promotions on the show but oh. hey for apex health we're gonna throw, we're gonna throw it out that. there and let them know that uh for anybody especially men if you're looking at improving your health this is a place to be 100 sure. percent. that's i think more of the uh, versus promoting more on the the health benefits side right yeah. there's a lot of shortage of health specialists and stuff and access to it so check them out so speaking of time and budget, mm. we've talked about this. We've kind of dug into it a little bit. Tell me a little bit more about a project where you felt like this is not going to be within time or budget. And how did you conquer that? Yeah, this is a, a few years back as well. I did a basement renovation, brand new build, Stonebridge, huge, like 2,400 square foot basement, um, empty. Uh, and um, the the homeowners wanted to finish the basement with a bathroom, a bedroom, but they also want to run a salon business out of the basement. Mm -hmm. And so it, it was something that they want done as quickly as possible. But obviously the budget was limited because they just bought this huge brand new house, right? In Stonebridge, which is a, you know, higher end areas of the higher end part of Manatic. Some people like to call it Manatic. Some people will get very upset with you if you call it Manatic. So we're going to call it Barhaven. It was Barhaven for now. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it was uh, it was a little bit tricky. They lived in the house now. The budget was tight, um, but you had twenty four hundred square feet of living space, yeah. and it's not just drywall and flooring, and then call it a day, right? You had a bathroom, a bedroom, and then you know, two station salon with a wash sink and a you know hair drying station. So the budget was pretty high up, but like I said, to be able to manage that type of budget, there's no markup on the on the materials. And that's what we were able to, how we were able to keep it uh, within their scope. And, you know, we went a little bit over, but we had some contingency there. Uh, and the timelines, I just, it's one of those things where you're like, okay, they need it done in this time. 
it's not something I can do one man show here, right? You have to bring in the help to make you move faster. Yeah. So, and uh, thankfully, uh, my trades are are all like, when I call on them, plumbing, HVAC, electrical, and when I call, they come. So I, I'm I'm very thankful for them and, and lucky to have these these teams. Um, but the help is is where it needs to be, right? You you have timelines. You get the proper help. You get the right people, licensed, insured, you know, um, and, and know what they're doing with the experience. And they'll get it done in the timelines that you need. That's important. So tell me a little bit more about how you handled that conversation. Like, the, hey, I'm just about to break that budget. Like, what are your... Yeah, it's it's something actually I try to do at the beginning. So when we come in, look at the space, and I quote the project for them, I explain to them, like, you know, this is what it's going to cost. Tell me what your budget is. I don't ask for the budget first because I feel like that might make make people think that you know if I could do it for cheaper I won't because they have a bigger budget right mm-hmm. I'll charge more so I don't I don't like to ask that question it's it's not something I feel comfortable asking yeah. at the very beginning so I'll wait till the end I create my quote and I say this is my quote this is what it's going to cost what's your budget if it works great or if it works great if not um, you can always adjust you can adjust yeah. right so we we have that conversation at the beginning I try not to leave it to the end, have it as a surprise because it never goes well. Yeah. And that's, I think that's the key point of how to manage those situations is to put a plan in place. Say, you know, this is what it's going to cost. Let's put a little bit of money aside for anything that comes up that's a surprise so that we're not surprised later. And there's always surprises. This is 100%. one of the biggest things when it comes to renovations and mm. specifically renovations or like a gut job is yeah. at the end of the day, if you don't plan for the worst, if you don't plan for uh, contingencies or anything like that, you're gonna be completely screwed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're gonna run into issues. It's it's very rare where you don't. And so to have that small, I mean, if it's a you know a few percent of yeah. the entire budget, but to have something so that it's not a huge hit at the end. And this is where that expression "measure twice, cut once" kind of really exactly. comes in handy because 100%. you measuring twice in the situation is really okay. Let me just double check on the budget mm-hmm. and really make sure that everything that I said is supposed to be there, supposed to be there. And then also when you start opening up walls and things like that, and mm-hmm. you know things that start to go sideways, Correct. how can I adjust that budget to make it work, or maybe adjust the scope because sometimes I might not be able to finish that bathroom. Mm-hmm. I might just at least get the rough end done, and then maybe I'll finish it other day yeah yeah absolutely and um you know sometimes like you said scope changes throughout right um where you start a project and that's happened a few times you know you start uh, a kitchen project where you're just replacing the cabinets and countertop and they're like well what about this wall you know what about the flooring uh can we put pot lights so it it, it starts to grow right and so it it takes your initial budget and and uh, and uh quote out of the uh out of where it originally was, yeah. you'd have to, you know, sit down and say, okay, we can do it, but there's going to be additional costs, right? So it's just, it's that upfront, being upfront and honest, I think is the most important thing. That's, I think, the key to the success in this type of, in any business. Right? Absolutely. And the biggest thing I find, especially with working with general contractors, is like setting up expectations on both sides. Yeah. Someone once said to me is expectations are really, they're, they're not met mm. and they're not measured unless both parties fully understand what the expectations are. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah, if I'm sure. saying, okay, this is my budget, this all, and I give you all my expectations, just because you say, yes, I understood them, it doesn't mean that you fully understood them. Yeah, true. But once both parties fully understand it, then we can definitely meet them. Yeah. yeah so sure. just on that note, I want to kind of, before we kind of conclude this, I want to get a little bit of piece of advice from you for the audience out there that are looking at doing a renovation job or looking at getting into possibly general contractor or even looking at um, the potential of doing a flip job. Mm. And some of them don't obviously have the capabilities or the capacity, but they can hire somebody like yourself. So what do you recommend they look out for some of the advices that you want to give them? Absolutely. One thing I, I like to tell everybody is get more than one quote. Yeah, don't stop at one. Even if you know the guy, even if he's your he hates me for this. <laughs> yeah, your your brother, your first cousin. It doesn't matter who the person is. That's that you're getting quoted. Don't get one quote exactly. And then that's the thing because you you have different perspective. Yeah, too. It's not just the one person coming in. Like if you can get two, three, amazing. Three is I, my minimum is what I tell uh, yeah. uh, whoever I talk to. You know, get get a minimum of three quotes in anything you do, whether yeah. it's you're buying appliances from. Like, I do that in my business too, man. I always tell them, look, I'm, you met me, it's fantastic, but meet another couple of agents and like really find out 
who is the right fit for yeah. you. Yeah, because it, it may not, even if they choose you, it may not be good for you as a general contractor. You may not line up with the individuals, yeah. right? You might bump heads, which makes it difficult, right? So they need to feel comfortable with the person. You need to feel comfortable yeah. with the client too, right? So w- would you agree though to like that, that quoting sort of stage should yeah. also be like an interview in a way? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Like you, it needs to be a a formal but informal sit down. You know, you have a coffee, make it comfortable. Like, don't just rush into the person's house, look around, measure, and leave. Mm. Um, you know, sometimes that has to happen depending on the situation. But um, it, you know, you can maybe do that when you're doing an initial quote. You know, you're going to get the measurements, check it out, come back, write up the quote, then you go back and you actually spend some time. Yeah. Right. It. Rushing it is not going to help anybody. So that's that's key for sure. Yeah. And like so. sometimes that also in my business, we do it quite often. Like I'll go in and take a look at the house. I'm not necessarily listing it today, but I'm going to take a first initial look just so I can get an idea mm-hmm. what I would list it at if I do list it. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes it's like, I just don't want to list it. I like actually genuinely just don't feel like we're the right fit. Sure. Uh, so having that second look, it gives you that sort of sense of, no, I fully understand it. And now actually... I came up to that price, the conclusion based on this. The same for you guys. Like you've seen it once, let's do once over. And then, yep. you know, that way at least you're both in the same sort of percent. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's that also you, you need to feel comfortable in their home or business, wherever you're working to. So I, I like to, if I'm looking at things in the house to pick up on certain items they might have that interest me. You know, if they got, uh, I went to uh, a residence uh, not long ago and they had this huge moose statue in their basement. I like to go hunting. So, you know, it's something they pick up on, you know, like the size of that thing. And you kind of get a story of where it came from and stuff like that. You open up that door of getting them comfortable with you and you knowing who they are, what they like, you know, what their sense of, yeah. of thought is. So it's important for sure. No, it's amazing. And it just gives you. Like I said, it gives you that sort of comfortable with them. Like, mm-hmm. am I comfortable working with them? 100%. Are they comfortable working with me? It's a chance again to meet them one more time and yeah. you know get a gist of like who they are as people. Like, is this gonna be a right fit for us? Hundred yeah. percent. So, and then for folks that are interviewing multiples, like, what else do you suggest as far as the digging into that sort yeah of as- process? Aside from like getting multiple quotes, once you're you know, trying to finalize with someone specific you might feel comfortable with uh, is the important stuff, right? Insurance, liability, right? You, you need to make sure. References, yeah. References and. Uh, Past jobs. You can go look at their their previous work, but um, that those are all important things. Uh, making sure that what you go and see is the quality and then to go and talk to people who they've done work for, right? To come back after mm-hmm. a year, you know, is it still held, holding together? Is it falling apart, right? Um, so definitely reference is important, but uh, insurance is is one key thing because I, I you hear a lot of stories about the contractor, you know, uh, started a fire and, and you yeah. know, in a brand new build or even in a, in a renovation, right? And then it causes a lot of trouble. So, and then that's the other thing too, unfortunately in, in this business and correct me if I'm wrong, we only hear the bad stuff. It's very rare that someone will say, oh my goodness. Yeah. My contractor was amazing. It's actually, it, it takes us a little bit of an extra saying, Hey, look, i I love what you've done to the, like, you know, this or that, or like mm-hmm. the, the, the kitchen. Can you get me your contractor's information? I always do it because yeah. I always hear the negative. Yeah. So I want to, it's not like I want to change it only, but it also for me to have a, a much certainly. bigger contact as well. Too. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. It references is, a, is definitely key and, and really in a lot of our businesses, right? And, yeah. uh, but just to be covered, you know, from a, the client side, the homeowner, the business side is to, to make sure that one, yes, they get multiple quotes, but to make sure they're covered because at the end of the day, it's dollars and cents. Correct. Uh, you know, no matter how much you like somebody, no matter how much, you know, you want things to work out great. Um, at the end of the day, it's, it's dollars and cents. So <clears throat> if there's a major problem and your contractor doesn't have any kind of liability or insurance uh, coverage, um, pretty much on your own, you're on your own. Uh, and then you get I like the, how you like things uh, also position the whole dollars and cents because sometimes like yes it is dollars and cents but just because it's dollars and cents don't go and hire the cheapest exactly um, even if their quality is great yeah because one thing you could maybe cheapen on is the like great yeah maybe the quality is fantastic and then they are also cheap mm. but maybe they're cutting corners and you didn't really know if they're for example if there's a structural beam sure. that or not 
it's going to affect you mm-hmm. when I'm trying to sell the house. Yeah, 100%. Not so much dollars and cents about finding the cheapest quote, more about potential of something going wrong and what that would cost. Correct. So the extra dollars and cents on top of your project is is what you don't want to have to deal the with. The hidden cost. I the hidden know. cost and the, the emergency cost, right, in case something does happen. So having the proper coverage, insurance, liability stuff is very important for for something when you're looking for a contract, right? So it's just to cover yourself and make sure that they, they can cover themselves in case something big happens. Yeah. So I know back in the, like during the pandemic, we, you couldn't get a contractor if your life depended yeah. on it for a good, you know, six month out at least. Yeah. What's, what kind of is the wait nowadays? What are we looking at as far as quoting from the time I get a quote to the time I get the job yeah. started? It really depends on the size of the project and every, you know, every company is, is different in regards to their, their business and timelines, but I'd say two to three months. Sometimes, you know, it could be two to three weeks if it's something reasonably quick. Yeah, small size project. We're trying to get a bathroom done. Okay, I'm, that may, might be two weeks out. We can get you in. And Basically, uh, you're looking at any, it could range anywhere from two weeks to two, maybe three months if it's a larger project. Yeah. What's an average renovation, like a full renovation, kitchen, bathroom, a couple of bathrooms, let's say, flooring, it would take you for, you know, for you guys, like, Normal size house, let's say 2,000, 2,500 square feet. Timeline? Uh, timeline, mm-hmm. as as long as the material is all there. Mm-hmm. A kitchen, a couple of bathrooms, flooring is probably somewhere around the two-week mark. Two to three weeks at a max if, if nothing comes up. Amazing. So yeah. like if someone is looking at a full sort of reno that, you know, we're probably looking at about maybe two months. Something on those, yeah. I mean, if you are you have a house that a full gut kind of thing or you're doing a full uh, full refresh on the house, Somewhere around that month and a half, two months, yeah. And just for folks that are looking out there, again, nobody's going to quote you on it. What's an average square foot nowadays cost? It it depends on the room, but, uh, you know, the bathroom's anywhere from, you know, say, $15, $20 a square foot, I would say. Okay. If you go to the kitchen, then it gets a little... It gets a little bit more expensive, depending, right? You can do a kitchen on a budget. doesn't mean it's cheap quality, but it's it's not your custom kitchen from, you know, some of the local custom kitchen cabinet things, right? It's your Ikea or your Home Depot, Rona, you know, pre-made cabinets, which I use in my own house. And I don't use Ikea so much, not that I don't like them or anything. It's it's the assembly part. I'm not a big fan. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think anybody is. But you need uh, like a PhD in yeah, yeah, exactly. You have to be an engineer yeah, like for sure. Fifteen thousand pieces. Yeah, and no instructions. But uh, yeah, no, the you know kitchen. one Allen key <laughs> that strips too, right? <laughs> yeah, but uh, so it's it does, definitely gets a little bit higher in the kitchen as you go. Flooring is it's it all depends, right? You can't really average a cost until you really get in and, and choose your finish. Amazing! I can't wait to uh, get you into the next Renault. Really appreciate that. I think we have too. actually, you and I have something tomorrow. Yeah. Really appreciate having you on the show, bro. Thank um, you. I, I'm the other thing thankful. too is like, I, I'm looking forward to more and more business with you. And uh, I do as well. You know, yeah. Seeing your work. I've seen some of your work and it's uh, definitely speaks highly for itself. And Thank you. I appreciate it. Definitely. It's, w- it's one of the very few people that I would put my name on it. And uh, the Thank reason you, being is I'm, I'm just very cautious. That's just how I am. That's good. And I'm putting my name out there. Uh, definitely want to make sure that it's good quality, Absolutely. reasonable, responsible honest and that's first and foremost Absolutely. with that i wanted to thank you so much for being on the on the part of the podcast thank here. you really appreciate it and uh, for any for the folks out there if you want to get a hold of uh ibrahim is very very easy to get a hold of you let me know i'll let you know we're going to make sure to leave his contacts as well too all of the information uh tagged in thank and for you. folks that are watching thank you so much for watching this show is all about this is the now season two starting thank you so oh, much wow. for being the first well, episode on season two. i wish you guys all the best yeah, man, it's uh, lots of new businesses that are out there in Ottawa that we would want to kind of put the focus on and, sure. and bring them to the forefront and let people know about this fantastic city that we live in, this awesome, awesome area. And also just let you know that at the end of the day, like any business that you could think of, just let us know. We'll hit them up. We'll, we'll I'll actually go out of my way to just reach out to them and get them on the podcast just so you can learn about them. Uh, it's not a boring city. And, and I'm going to kind of say this and continue this crusade that Ottawa is not boring. If it is boring, you and I got to talk and I'll tell you why. With that being said, thank you so much. If you like what you see, don't forget to hit the subscribe just so you can get more and more of those episodes, especially with season two starting and hit the like button so we can, you know, the algorithm can understand that you like it and show you more as these episodes come along. And uh, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Before we go, I did get you a little something. 
Oh, fantastic. Oh, yeah, we got to, we got to, I got some gifts. That's fantastic. Yeah, so this is season two starting. And uh, it looks like season two is going to be all about gift giving. Than, yeah, okay, good. <laughs> Let's see what this is all about. You can, you oh, can wear nice. it when you're doing rentals nice. at home, okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, I love the V-neck, bro. This is amazing. Perfect. Hopefully it fits. Well, how'd you I know my the, size? Figured we're about the same size. Same size. So. Thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks again, folks. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, hit the like, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.